most of our passwords kind of suck. Um, and I just want to say just really, just first off again, like thanks Julianne for organizing this. I think this is a really, really great um, space and a really great community uh, for all of us to gather and learn from one another. I've really been enjoying the presentation so far. So thank you to uh, those who've been presenting as well. Um, so yeah, so we uh, today, ooh, that might get in your way, but uh, we today are going to talk a little bit about uh, passwords and the importance of actually establishing good passwords when it comes to cybersecurity. As all of you are probably pretty aware at this point, we are in a global pandemic. Um, and so more so than ever, we are online, we are in a virtual space. Um, and over the last probably I'd say 10 to 20 years, the global trend of crim, like crime and criminology as a whole is that crime, traditional crimes, what we call traditional crimes, such as murder and theft and more or less things like that have been uh, kind of reducing over the last 20 to 30 years. In fact, the thing that we're seeing that's on the rise in the last 20 to 30 years is online crime, things like credit card theft and fraud and identity theft. Um, with the rise of online crime is what we're seeing is that people are becoming less and less prepared to actually deal with the exponential growth in internet, in internet usage and therefore we don't actually have a lot of good practices when it comes to actually developing good security just like when you purchase a new home or when you rent a house you figure out how the locks work or figure out how a safe works in your home we want to be able to develop really good security um, in order to actually protect the information that we have online because a lot of it is really really sensitive such as banking information and medical records um, nowadays, uh, and this is just from a really quick Google search that I did, but also in some of my research when I was in criminology and when I worked for the government as well, is that brute force password cracks, which is like you're just inputting a password into like a login screen like over and over and over again. Um, for a traditional password that is just a bunch of lowercase letters, for instance, it takes about three days to crack that, which is an absurdly short amount of time. If your password contains a distinguishable word, it will usually take less time than three days, probably about one or two days. If your password includes personal information of yours that you can easily find on the internet, say it's on your resume or say it's on your Facebook profile or your Twitter handle or your Instagram posts, it's gonna take even less time than that, probably about a day or less. And if there are multiple computers working at brute force uh, password cracking all at the same time, we're looking at seconds at cracking your passwords nowadays. And so for the most part, all of us have this need and a great need, in fact, for security, but uh, we also have, we also desire, really, really uh, have a great desire for, for privacy in all of this. Uh, oftentimes I've heard people say, well, I don't care what I have online. Like you can just see whatever, I have no value for privacy. And if that's the case, I would encourage you after this presentation to give me your email password because I would like to take a look through all of your uh, emails or you know your banking pin, stuff like that. Some of you may uh, recognize the name Edward Snowden. He worked for the, I, I was gonna say the NRA, but that's not right. <laughs> I think I meant to say the NSA. Um, and one of the things he realized uh, when he uh, revealed information about the NSA is that most people cannot and actually do not make good passwords. And the most common passwords that we see around are things that we think are clever or easy to remember. Uh, when in fact they're probably the most common passwords. The most common password currently uh, around the internet is the password password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Um, sometimes we think we can be clever and we'll go five asterisks um, above the eight there, that's a common password. Or the other one is the numbers one, two, three, and four spelt out exactly as demonstrated here. Again, the, the need for password creation really will be able to help prevent so much of the identity and fraud and theft that happens online that really is a quite uh, quite nearly a billion dollar industry. Uh, criminals around the world are able to hack and steal information at an exorbitant amount um, and rate at these uh, at this point in time. Maliciously, sometimes you think if we put our personal information as passwords, then surely we will protect we will be protected. But more often than not, things that are on your birth certificate or things that um, we think are like really secure pieces of information like your middle name, the city where you were born, or your mother's maiden name is actually readily accessible to most people. And so they also do not make very good passwords. So my recommendation is to change your password, quite simply. Change your password and shift the ideas of making passwords from passwords to pass phrases. Edward Snowden has this really, really um, 
obsession, this really huge obsession with Margaret Thatcher. And so his recommendation is to make the password Margaret Thatcher is 110% sexy written exactly as it is uh, displayed here on the screen. This is a good password, but over time we're realizing that this password itself is not good enough anymore. We need to start incorporating symbols, capital letters, and numbers into our passwords in such a way where we don't have distinguishable words anymore. So that password on the bottom, if we do the calculation just by adding the capital letters, the symbols, and the, uh, and the non-distinguishable words, this password here on the bottom will take approximately a thousand years to crack on multiple computers, which is an absurd amount of time and really, really powerful. So you might be thinking, what are some ideas for passphrases? I've listed out a few ideas here and I'll post this presentation in the group afterwards, but here are just a few of, uh, you know, ideas that I like that I think are really, would make really, really good passwords. Anything from short movie quotes to scriptural references um, and, you know, the actual verse, not just the reference, that could be a lot of words, but maybe find something short. Uh, a short poem, a short quote, a chorus from your favorite song, the first question your family or friends will always ask when they call you, an idiom. Uh, directions to your home from the nearest intersection, the thing you always want to say to your boss but never do, or what you say when you are checking out uh, at a grocery store and the only thing you're buying are condoms or something embarrassing. Just one last little bit, and I know I'm going a little bit over time here, but just a, one more last thing to really consider um, when it comes to your online security is that there are multiple ways for you to remember your passwords and that systems will try to help, but may not actually be really helpful and may actually endanger your cybersecurity. So a piece of advice and, you know, just thing, things to remember is that you don't actually need to tell the truth when it comes to your security question. If it asks what your mother's maiden name is, you don't need to actually put your mother's maiden name. You can put something else in there. You don't even need to answer the question properly. If a question asks what's your mother made, mother's maiden name, I put something like water bottle something that doesn't actually indicate anything serious about you. Only you need to remember your answers. You don't need to actually tell the truth. I would also recommend writing down your passwords on paper. Don't keep it on your computer and your phone. That's easily hackable. And I would actually recommend changing your passwords every once in a while. Ideally, it's recommended every half a year, but let's be honest, you're not gonna be doing that. I'm not even doing that. So I would, I would say I change my passwords probably once every two or three years, realistically. And for the love of God, update your devices so often as soon as you can update your devices because not only does it protect your device in terms of cybersecurity, it will provide the latest security things for your devices to remain protected so update 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 as soon as you can thanks